It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens, and it's coming up next. Well, from a city that normally gets only about 20 inches of snow a year, they're getting a pretty good wallop right now as we're at m and Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gaughton on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather, snow, and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises, one of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. A number eight, Lamar Jackson, trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. They go play action with Jackson. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Just like that, it's a gain of 12 and a first down on their first play. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. The tackle made by Alandon Roberts. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh, so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Edwards now on first and ten. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through. Pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Now they run the option on second down. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was, because so many times on an option play, you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback, and then zip, one cut, and he's grasping at air. But this time, he locked in on him the whole way, took an excellent angle, and his grasp came up with the quarterback. And he will have a Ravens first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. 
We've got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game. It will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go, and sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled, well prepared, and excited to start this game. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's the big fellas MO right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Play action. Now Jackson. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to have it here just past the 25. So we see it right here on the opening drive, throwing the football in these snowing conditions. It's going to be very, very tough. You wonder if they're going to rethink the aerial attack going forward. It will be interesting, and it'll be a debate, because most of the quarterbacks that we know, they believe they can throw through anything. They don't care if it's rain, snow, it doesn't matter. As long as they get a chance to throw the football. And I think a lot of coaches think that in these conditions, let's throw it early before things get worse. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. A leading them out, a third-round pick in 2018. He's made a handful of starts across his five previous seasons. Mason Rudolph. And when Mason Rudolph is on the field, sometimes the scouting reports have to be revised a little bit because often quarterbacks like to throw short to get a rhythm. For Mason Rudolph, he loves the deep fade and he loves the deep post pattern. Anything over the top, those are his favorite shots downfield, and that's what gets him comfortable. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Justin Matabike working his way to quarterback that time. It may be cliche, but it is something that holds up over time, doesn't it? If you're the visitors, you don't want to let the crowd in the game early. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did there. But you said also this defense, they're going to give them a lot of looks like we just saw there, aren't they? They certainly are. They're a proud unit, and they're going to ride the momentum of this crowd with them, and that's why they got after them early. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Straight ahead with Warren. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Well executed there on second down, so do you go back to the air on third? Well, that's a possibility, but now you've opened up things to where you showed that you would run the ball in long-distance situation. You might come back again because I doubt they believe you'll do it a second time. They'll fake the handoff. Now Rudolph. Well, he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up four. Nice job there, forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game, watching him try to take away that area of the field. Now a fourth down, Presley Harbin on to punt for the Steelers. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Well, they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back, and it's still 0-0. And because of that, you know what the thought process is? Interception. What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and a couple. Go, 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 go. 
Jackson firing quickly out wide for Bateman. Jackson to Bateman there for the Baltimore first. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, turn into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball, get it out to him. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. On second down, here's Jackson. His throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. It's not quick cool about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Jackson now. Buying time to his left. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. On the counter, it's Edwards, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Now Jackson on second down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Now, after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Now back to throw. It's Cameron Hayward who got in there to take him down. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense. Six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little I bit jumpy. You do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Now second and seven from the 23. Rudolph. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. A run with Harris out of the shotgun his blockers to get this up over the 40. 
It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Here's second and three. Now a toss play. It's Harris. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. This size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third down, here's Rudolph. Looking deep downfield. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. This is taken at the 18. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. We sort of suspected that the elements might wreak havoc on both of these offenses, and that's been the case. No points on either side as this drive begins with a first down. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold them to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. This is second and eight. Throwing is Jackson. And his throw is going to be in. Complete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. That is caught, and he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, he's going to make a play for me. I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. This will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try to hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. Now a second and ten. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They'll see about converting this third and eight. Jackson. That's going deep for Bateman. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Rashad Bateman, 61 yards. And the Ravens get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers. That meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. You always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that makes the score 7-0.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 21. Harris will start the drive out, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run. All right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Rudolph throwing on second down. Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith, and they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. And this might not be the last interception we see, Brandon. Both of these teams like to throw the football, but here in this snow, ball's not going to always go where you want it to. And this one winds up getting intercepted. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. To the interception, here's Jackson. To the right side, into the hands of Flowers. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And now leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone... You see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him out to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. In the red zone, precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, you got a receiver here who's got one touchdown already in this first quarter, and they were trying to double his pleasure there. Wanting to continue to go to the guys already gotten into the end zone. But good coverage to make sure that this time it fell incomplete. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. field goal 10 nothing here early as the kicks away and he will be brought down here inside the 20 good coverage as he's dropped at the 17 and Pittsburgh getting set to take the field they look to get something started they need to down 10 nothing early as they've got it first and 10 They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. 
five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. But you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. From the gun, here's Rudolph. That's going to be caught by Pickens. And he will have a Steelers first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a first and ten. They'll fake it. Now Rudolph. It's brought in by Harris. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now a play fake, and it's Rudolph. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. I to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. And the Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Here's Rudolph. Robinson's got it. Well, I don't think he got there. No. He's short by maybe a foot. Maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. On oh, his Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded at the 20. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field, and they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one did I go to that. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. Here's Edwards again on second down. He'll get a yard. That's all as they get him down at the 28. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and ten. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. It hasn't gone particularly well for them, that's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? 
It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic, meaning you don't have to go deep down the field, maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter, make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. He sets to fire deep. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. They've had multiple opportunities on offense and still haven't scored any points. Felt like they wanted to loosen things up, throw it downfield, and see if maybe they could get a big play and a quick strike. Second and ten. Now Rudolph. And that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up the third down. I'll tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Have a lot of point yet flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So back-to-back -to -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Back to throw Rudolph. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And this will be taken at the 13. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And they will take over first and 10. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. And they run with Edwards off the option. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now it's Jackson. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. There he goes offside. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. When they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. It looked like almost some miscommunication defensively, because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication... It's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it will wind up incomplete. Well, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now it's Jackson. He's 
Gotta tell you, that's complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 32-yard line. That'll put him over 100 yards receiving now here in this first half of action. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. They'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. On second down, it's Edwards. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the line. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it? How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. A 42-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first-half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps, and the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. now following the main field goal set to kick it away on the return from his end zone Godwin Iguibuque and that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20 the Steelers ready for their next possession and this not an easy situation you're down early in the elements you're on the road how do you get the mojo back well one thing is to remember that as an offensive player you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And the Steelers on third down. Just one for five to this point. Here it's third and two. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It'll be a gain of 17 at a Pittsburgh first. And this offense has been a little slow to get going, but some signs of life here in this second quarter. They're moving it pretty good. And that helps the cause as well. Good yardage and another first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Harris running straight ahead. 
And down to the 44, five yards at a time. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Rudolph looking to throw. He finds Robinson. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Brings up third. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. But we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. First down, and they go back to Harris. 53 yards rushing for him now to this point. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field, but his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Here now, second and four. Play action. It's Rudolph. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 12-yard line. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. Now it's Rudolph off the bootleg. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I really like what I've seen from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Here's second and ten. Here's Rudolph. Touchdown Steelers. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers have cut it back within a score. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to draw up those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But when you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle tough they couldn't handle it it worked out for six Chris Boswell now for the extra point and that'll make it 13-7 a pretty long drive that time 11 plays all told and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Baltimore Raven offense returns, and we see wide receiver Rashad Bateman bringing him out, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 right at the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw caught by Flowers. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. 
A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. They'll go with Hill here on first down. They'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and eight. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 41 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Jackson. They set up the screen to Hill. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Now Jackson. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. Well, sometimes despite the best planning, the defense actually has a plan as well, and they blanketed everyone on that play. They were able to close it down and spill it for a loss. Well, they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Jackson now. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And a broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. An effective seven yard third down conversion. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. On first and ten, it's Jackson. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Montrevious Adams credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Jackson from the shotgun. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. will go down as a gain of six. And that brings up third and a full ten yards. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. On third down, Jackson escaping the play. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. It's fourth down. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 48. Tucker's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our meeting. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
Not much has changed since we left you at halftime. The snow is still continuing to fall as we are back underway. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. By no means certainly are they out of this contest. Two-score game start of the third quarter, but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points, then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, and that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. It's what I call one of those calming drives, try and slow things down a little bit. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Rudolph off play action. Now a short pass pulled in by Washington. So the completion good for six yards. And it brings up third and five now. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Rudolph. Here's one deep for Pickens. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at about the 32. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. They'll work from the 36 on second and six. From the gun, it's Jackson. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Throwing is Jackson. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Now Austin. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Rudolph's throw complete to Fryermuth. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now second and five.
Now Rudolph. Complete. It's Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. On the give, this is Harris. 59 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and three. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in... He's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. At this point in the game, and the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps, and soon. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. On the give, it's Warren. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Rudolph on first down. And quickly into the hands of Robinson. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch third down and one now run straight ahead with Warren and he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven yard line the five yards on the play there as the drive will continue I think they like this drive a little bit better there partner running game helping out picking up some of the slack because remember the last drive, they went three and out. From the gun, here's Rudolph. This is caught. Touchdown! Pat Fryermuth. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers are back within a score. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Extra point now by Boswell. And it's good. It cuts it to two. 16-14 our score. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Chris Boss. 
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter, despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 in the first down. And Brandon, this is the time of the game where Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead. This is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. Edwards now on first and ten. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. From the 42-yard line, here's a second and four. They run once more with Edwards. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. We call a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. The quick feet by Jackson. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. So not his arm, but hurting him with his legs. A gain of 19 on the keeper in the first down. Pretty ideal right there. Keep it yourself. Get the first down and get the heck out of bounds. And knowing him, I believe he's thinking, I can get a few more yards if I just lower my shoulder. But he also hears that second voice in his head. His head coach, and probably his agent too, saying, get out of bounds, man. Don't do that. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Now it's Jackson. Checks this down to Edwards out of the backfield. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. On second down, Jackson. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. They certainly thought they had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Now it's Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 21. 12 yards to pick up there, good for a Raven first. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Call it a gate of four on first, and that'll make it second down. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. On second down, here's Jackson. Throw that side, taken in by Hill. And the Ravens are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. I'll tell you what, this offense has been a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possess the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. And this is 
is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Considering they've seen him have some big gains against him throughout this game, that's got to feel like a measure of revenge as they trap him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Here's Jackson to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. So that changes things, no doubt. We thought we might be on the verge of our initial score of the game, but after that interception... The long return. Yeah, then they had that long return, and now it's the other sideline who might be the first to put the points up. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And now they are in prime position, first and goal after the interception and return. They'll look to make it pay off for six points. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. After the interception, here's Rudolph. Zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Jalen Warren from eight yards out. And the Steelers have scored again in this third quarter, this time to move out in front. But well, what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs, and if you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one PG. FCC violation. No doubt. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And now here come the Ravens. In a close game like this, Charles, those interceptions like they had on the last drive could be costly, but here they've got another opportunity to seize control of this game. And they'd better take advantage of it because otherwise, if they end up losing by one score, they'll relive this over and over and over until they have another opportunity to wipe it away. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw, and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that will bring up second down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 69 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. And they run the option here on first and 10. And good vision there is across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Another nice game, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. 
Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Jackson, option right. And maybe Shane's in the steel curtain here as the Steeler defense drops him behind the line again. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable, but that time the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And this is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. And this will remain a five-point game. Well, he might be the best kicker the game's ever seen. And we've seen him hit from 66, which is the all-time record. But anything 60-plus, that's a very low percentage kick. Don't tell him. He doesn't believe it. But this one winds up no good. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. On second down, this is Harris. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Rudolph. And he is caught. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Here comes a first down throw from Rudolph. That's complete to his tight end fire move. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. On first down, it's Rudolph. Here's Fryermuth again. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now it's Rudolph off the bootleg. Now he's got it. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Harris diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. 
So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one yard line and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Boswell for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And able to get this out to the 25. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Yeah, the script really has flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He drops this one off underneath here for Hill. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and yeah, that's going to bring up second down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You have the first one for the second one to even matter. Now Jackson. He finds Aguilar over the middle. Seven yards there at a first down. Now a handoff, Edwards. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's a second and eight. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Jackson options out left and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Alex Highsmith simply would not be stopped on that play and not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Oh, for the third time, Jackson going to be intercepted. Still going inside the 20. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. So a fourth quarter pick six here, and that one might put this game out of reach, CD. I certainly agree with that, partner. And I know one thing, though. That team that just got the pick six, they're going to keep playing until this one's over. Better be careful. They're looking to get another one.
extra point now by Boswell. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. The Ravens take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And that last pick six may have been the backbreaker as they now face a three-score deficit in the fourth quarter. They need points quickly. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. His throw incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Jackson. Complete to Likely on the out route. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. They'll run for it. It's Edwards, and he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's at six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now Jackson on second down. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Inside the 10. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Well, this defense just continuing to do their thing. And now they add on to that lead with another pick six. And how about the way they've played this entire game? Not only have they put their stamp on it, but every time they try and mount an offensive challenge, they find a way to thwart it. And multiple pick sixes? Oh, yeah, they'll enjoy watching this tape after the game. Boswell for the extra point. And that will bump the lead up to 26. The heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Returning it just as Hill. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Ravens offense back out there. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Complete to Likely. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Jackson on first down. It's caught by Aguilar. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll make it second down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 39-yard line. Guys, ready to get it over right now before you step up. Jackson now. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Another throw there off the mark. And obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question. And my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you, no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. But we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. This has obviously been a bad loss, but one of the few things they can still do is try and throw the ball all the way to the end zone and get some points on the board so they're not shut out over the final two quarters of this game. Here we go, it's Jackson on fourth down. Completes it to Aguilar. And he is going to have a Ravens first down by a couple of yards as they get five there on fourth and three. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw is on target to Likely. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. Jackson throwing complete there to Flowers. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants them to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late points. He wants his lead to stay right where it is. No gain on the play there, second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think his big boys up front, that offensive line, they've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. On third down, here's Edwards. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. 
And that leads to a fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. They'll send a tight end in motion right. And now Jackson will look to throw it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Now it's Jackson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That incompletion brings us one step closer to the end of this one. Maybe mercifully, partner. And let's face it, though. No surprise, they're still flinging it around. They have pride, too. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. Here's Jackson to throw. Being chased out left. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Lamar Jackson, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens are able to cut into that deficit. Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he softened him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes. And when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone. And that's exactly what he did there. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. Now it looks like we're going to get a stoppage here. An injured Steeler on that last play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. They hand this off to Harris, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Again, it's Harris on second down. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. This offense so far on third down, they've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be third and five. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. So first and 10 now from the 30. 
They'll try the air now. Here's Rudolph. And this one nearly picked off. Kind of surprising to see defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. They run with Harris, and running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, front five, whatever you've got in front of you. To oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the Ravens are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. All right, Brandon. Normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking must be a free safety, maybe a corner. How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. And that's another great play to come away with the football. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. And quickly, they get to the line. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Jackson from the shotgun. On target to his man, likely. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 35. Here's Jackson. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. That is incomplete. Looks like they're going to keep throwing to the bitter end. This one's long since over, but give them credit. They're going to go down fighting. That one, incomplete. Here's second and ten now from the 35. Now it's Jackson. Yeah, he's just throwing the ball up for grabs now. Fortunately, that one going to fall incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They go play action now. Jackson. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Larry Ogunjobi able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago.
Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And maybe more importantly, a victory in the division, which always helps. And on the road. How about all of that rolled up into one? Because how often do you see division games get decided by this much of a margin? Yeah, they time, thumped them. Yeah, you know, they jumped all over them. And a division game is usually a touchdown or less because these two teams know each other better than most teams in the league. In this case, that didn't hold up on the road. Big margin.